In this video, we're going to talk about PPE in the body shop, critical PPE for common body shop activities. Body shop personnel use an incredible range of PPE almost on a daily basis. Today, we're going to talk about six categories of PPE that are most commonly used in body shops. Eye protection, face protection, hand protection, respiratory protection, hearing protection, and protective clothing. Eye protection is going to be one of your most widely used pieces of PPE in the body shop. That's because they protect the eyes from some very prominent hazards in body shops, like foreign bodies, like pieces of metal and dust and dirt that could get into your eyeball, or impacts of things of flying objects, and even splash hazards from chemicals. Um, so you have a few options, however, safety glasses are going to be your number one used pieces of, of eye protection. Um, safety glasses are noted with an ANSI Z87 stamp on the inside of the glass. That's how you know it is a rated safety glass that is approved for use in the workplace. Prescription glasses are generally not going to be ANSI Z87, no matter what your eye doctor told you. They could put your eyes at risk, particularly from physical hazards that can shatter the glass. If you do talk to your eye doctor about getting some prescription safety glasses, Ask him if he can get some that are ANSI Z87. It is a specialized product, but there is a chance that they know where to get them. Alternatively, you could wear over the glasses, safety glasses, which are basically just a larger pair of safety glasses that fit over your regular glasses that have the side shield protection and give you the same protection that a normal safety glass would give you. You also have goggles um, that are better suited for some other options, particularly chemicals. Um, but also some physical hazards. Um, one underused piece of equipment is a hybrid, which is a safety glass goggle in the top picture there of the glasses. This has a gasket on the inside of the frame that fits your eye like a goggle. That way, there's no way a piece of metal or dust could fly up through up underneath or through the top of your glasses, which is a common complaint that I hear. Also, you have some goggles that are shaded for like molten metal hazards. Uh, make sure you're using the proper PPE for the task at hand. Hand protection is going to be another one of your MVPs in the body shop. Body shop personnel are constantly faced with hazards to the hands, such as chemical hazards like caustic chemicals, or even some chemicals that can cause long-term health effects uh, from prolonged or repeated exposure, as well as physical hazards like cuts and punctures. Every body shop person should have access to a good set of chemical resistant gloves, um, particularly a box of nitro gloves that can be disposed of whenever those are um, applicable for the chemical that's in use. Some chemicals that are a little bit um, more caustic in nature require a thicker glove like a neoprene or natural rubber. You need to refer to the chemical safety data sheet or label to make sure you chose the right glove. But the disposable nitrile gloves can go right in the trash and make it really easy if you can use those. Cut resistant gloves have a wide range of what could be considered a cut resistant glove. A good mechanics glove is going to keep you from busting your knuckles, but a welder's glove or a general duty leather thick glove is going to give you a little bit more cut resistance. Or you could choose a glove that gives you a little bit more dexterity and has some cut resistant properties like the nitrile coated glove in the picture on the top there. As somebody who works in the body shop, you should be no stranger to respiratory protection. If you haven't yet, check out our video on respirator use, care, and storage to get the fine details on how to wear your respirator and some tips on how to take care of it and store it. Respirators can be used for a wide range of hazards that are found in, in body shops. Um, obviously, inhalation of harmful chemicals like paints and solvents, um, and also uh, dust inhalation hazards like body dust and metal dust. So as a control, we have a wide range of respirators that can be used. Uh, nuisance dust masks for inert chemicals. Um, N95s, which should probably be used more um, in lieu of, of nuisance dust masks because they do filter out um, more of those harmful chemicals in the air. So make sure you read the safety data sheet um, on whatever it is you're going to be exposed to before you select your respirator is what it comes down to. 
Um, we also have uh, air purifying um, masks like the picture on the top there. That's a half mask where you can do a full mask. Um, and the cartridges on those can be selected for the hazard at hand, um, whether it's you know an organic vapor, an aerosol, or a dust. Um, you'll see different uh, filters in those. So make sure you're selecting the correct um, filter and mask for what you're using. And there's also uh, pappers, which have a pump on the side, uh, usually worn on the belt, um, that pumps uh, purified air into a hood, which is a great option for you guys who don't like to shave, because that is one of the things that we find most often in body shops, is guys might wear the respirator, you know, when they're supposed to, but they're not clean shaven, so there's a good chance they're still getting exposed to the harmful chemicals. So something to keep in mind. Um, and finally, you have supplied air respirators, uh, which is the best form of protection because you're not relying on um, filtered air. You're getting it from a fresh air source. Um, hopefully it's through a hood, so you don't have to worry about shaving again, but I have seen them that are tight fitting. There's options out there. What it comes down to is read the labels, read the safety data sheets, and communicate your super with your supervisor so you're getting the right respirator for the task at hand. Almost everyone who works in the body shop should have access to face protection of some sort. There are chemical hazards where you could have a splash come back into somebody's face, and that would be great protection against that. Also, you have physical hazards, um, most notably from abrasive wheel grinding, like using a bench grinder, or even wire wheel use, where you'd need another clear face shield as well. Um, also, welding and other heat hazards um, and UV hazards you're going to need a specialized piece of equipment like a welding helmet. So make sure you have access to a clear face shield. Whenever you're wearing a clear face shield, it is recommended that you wear safety glasses underneath those um, because you can still get splashes and uh, dust and dirt that can pop up underneath that shield and get into the eyeball. Everybody who works in the body shop should have access to peering protection of some sort. Just running a piece of equipment like an air hammer or an air chisel or even an impact uh, in an enclosed space next to your head could permanently damage your hearing, and that's with any period of time at all. Um, so at the very least, whenever you're running equipment like that that is exceptionally loud, please put in some sort of hearing protection. You have options. Earplugs are a great option because they do give you really good protection. Uh, they fit inside the ear canal and block noise from coming in, and they're generally going to have a higher noise reduction rating or NRR than other options. Uh, the problem with them is hygiene concerns, particularly for people who work in body shops because you're going to have dirty hands often, and we don't want to shove oily um, or dirty earplugs directly into our ear canal. That will cause some other problems. Um, also, you need to make sure you're wearing them properly, particularly the foam plugs. Um, the push-ins, like the third one from the left there, the green ones, uh, those are pretty simple. You just shove those directly into your ear and you're good to go. The foam ones, though, you have to roll those up, insert them into your ear canal, let them expand um, without popping out of your ear in order for them to work properly and give you the noise reduction rating as advertised. Earmuffs um, are another good option because uh, they give you adequate protection. Um, they're convenient because all you have to do is throw them on and they last forever. The limitation on those is you can get a poor seal around your glasses and hair. So I'm not going to dictate what, what form of hearing protection uh, people choose to wear as long as they are wearing it uh, whenever um, the situation warrants it. Protective clothing is our final category of PPE in the body shop and those can help control a wide range of safety hazards. For example, uh, chemical hazards can be controlled with paint suits. Everybody who's painting should be wearing a paint suit at all times. Um, the reason for that is your skin is a big organ and it will suck up um, all those chemicals, whether it's solvent-based or it's water-based. They each have their own individual hazards and you need to be wearing a paint suit. Cuts and punctures can be prevented by wearing protective clothing like jeans um, and even some thicker aprons. Um, or jackets, depending on what it is we're doing, besides wearing gloves. Um, so if you're taking apart a collision job um, or moving scrap parts around, you should think about um, not wearing your Daisy Dukes uh, to work that day. Um, for burn hazards, uh, fire-resistant clothing like aprons, overalls, coveralls, and jackets can be worn um, to keep yourself from getting burned or getting caught on fire. 
And then you have crush hazards um, that are probably more common in body shops than anywhere else in the dealership. And we strongly suggest a safety toed shoe, whether it's a composite toe or steel toe, as long as it is ASTM rated, um, can help prevent some of those serious crush hazards. But I understand it takes away some of the dexterity of the toe to foot. Um, and it is not very comfortable and it takes some getting used to, but it could uh, save your toes um, if it ever came down to it. You also have slip hazards, so make sure your uh, shoes are in good condition. Um, they've got some tread on them. Uh, you could choose an actual slip resistant shoe if you felt so inclined, but just making sure they have adequate traction um, should be uh, sufficient. And that is it. That is our overview of all of the PPE categories that can be found in a body shop. As you can tell, there's a vast range of PPE that all body shop personnel are required to use and understand on a daily basis. So it's really up to the user or you to assess the task at hand and select the best PPE suited for the job. Ask your supervisor if you have questions, concerns, or need to obtain additional PPE. Thank you.